going on people? Welcome back to another video on my channel. I've just touched down at the Marriott Hotel in Portsmouth because yep, yeah, you've guessed it. Tomorrow morning, we are playing against Pompey, one of our biggest games, if not the biggest game of our season so far. Last time I saw you lot, we played against Rotherham, managed to get a nil-nil draw, which is a good result. We should have won, but it is what it is. Anyway, moved on. Tuesday night, played against Fleetwoods. I did have a video recorded for this, right? But look at how this footage turned out. I couldn't believe it. So I had to sack that off. And it was a sick video as well because we scored a 96th minute to make it 1-0 and win the game. But anyway, less of that. On to bigger and better things. We're playing against Pompey tomorrow. This here is a crunch, crunch game in our promotion hopes. So it's 10 p.m. now. I'm gonna try and get a good night's sleep tonight. I'll be looking forward uh, to getting into this bed. Woo, it's lovely, by the way, all day. You can't beat a Marriott bed. They're so, so good. So gonna rest up, try and get a good night's sleep, feel fresh for tomorrow, and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, game day is here. Thought I would have had a better sleep last night and I actually did, to be fair. Woke up, checked my whoop, only 53% recovered this morning I am. Ooh, not what you wanna see on a game day, but it's all right. It just means that I've gotta prepare even better going into this game for later on. Um, 9.15 now, I'm gonna head downstairs, get a little bit of breakfast. Bought my own stuff with me. I'll show you what I eat before a game when it comes to an away game. So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky at hotels. So yeah, let's get down there and let's uh, get this day started. I had an absolute stinker. When I left mine last night, I forgot to get my blueberries, raspberries, banana and chicken that I bought from Waitrose out of my fridge. And this is what happens. Shock they don't have any blueberries and raspberries here. They don't even have bananas here. So I have to settle for the chicken that they've got, which is just some sliced chicken. At least I remembered my, um, my granola. But not an ideal start to the day. So when it comes to breakfast on a game day, you wanna try and have a hit of carbohydrates that's what I'm having in the form of this granola. Luckily, that also has my hit of fat as well with the nuts inside it. Protein in the form of uh, a lean meat like white chi like chicken or white fish. So that's why I was going to bring down my chicken. They probably had this chicken, this sliced chicken in their fridges for over two weeks, but is what it is. A hit of fruit as well. So that would have been the blueberries, raspberries and banana. But it's all right. It's not the end of the world. I've also brought down with me my donut water. Luckily, I brought this because I couldn't play without that. I mean, start loading up on electrolytes now. Feel real good for 90 minutes throughout the game. Absolutely no cramps around here. So when it comes to the pre-match meal, all you want to focus on having is protein and carbohydrates. Make sure that the carbohydrates are higher in glycemic index, just so it's getting closer to kickoff now. Um, so you want to feel energetic and full of life going into the game. So I just sack this chicken off and have a full on fry up before today's game. Imagine that. Two sausage, two bacon, beans, and a few fried eggs. Lovely. Just about managed to work through that Bush Tucker trial this morning. Absolutely minging, but I ate all the chicken anyway, so. All's good. Just had a little shower, feeling fresh, ready to go. Made myself a little coffee. This here, after drinking this, I'm gonna feel like I'm 99% recovered anyway, so nothing to worry about. Um, I actually remember a couple of seasons ago, I played against Blackpool away. The hotel the night before was horrendous. I couldn't get any sleep. I must have had about 30 minutes sleep. No exaggeration, right? And I woke up, I remember I was panicking, um, thinking like, how the hell am I gonna have a good game today? 
So I started looking online, reading a few different articles and whatnot, and pretty much everything mentioned caffeine. Caffeine is the savior. And I actually remember as well, I came across a few different articles that were written by sleep specialists and whatnot, and they were saying, actually, that the most important sleep in the lead up to a big game or a big event is actually the sleep two nights prior to the big day. So you sleep well on, say for example, if your game is Saturday, you sleep well on a Thursday night, you put yourself in good stead going into the event, there's nothing really to worry about. I remember I actually had a, uh, a really good game that day as well, so all that panicking was for absolutely nothing. I think we won two nil, kept a clean sheet. Anyway, time to get this show on the road. I'm gonna get to pre-match now and uh, really start focusing on this game. Full swap. Yeah! yeah. Full edge. Full, no goal. Turn top here. Jay, narrow! Jay, go get done! Thank 
Mas Menu! Tools man on! Talk to me about how we did not win that game yesterday. Absolutely better Pompey. We had a couple of one-on-ones. They didn't have a shot on target in 90 minutes. We had all territory. Just couldn't score. Just could not score. It's one of them days, isn't it? You haven't been football. Um, normally, when you play Portsmouth away, if you get a draw, you leave happy. Um, but I was just... I was a bit deflated last night. I just felt like we needed, no, we didn't need, but we should have left there with three points. We deserved the three points. We are in good form. We've kept four clean sheets out of our last five games, only conceded one goal. And we've picked up, what is it, 11 out of a possible 15 points. So we're doing all right. We're doing all right. We've got the momentum behind us going into the most important part of the season, which is very important. I just uh, checked my whoop score from last night. 47% recovery, decent. I don't know why after games, I'm always, uh, I'm always poorly recovered. Obviously I've had a strenuous day yesterday, but I think the main reason for me is that I struggle to sleep well after a game. I, my mind is going at 100 miles an hour when I'm trying to fall asleep at night. That's why I fell asleep at what, five to one last night. My stomach's all over the place where I've had like so many electrolytes and energy gels yesterday during the game. So I'm constantly like getting up, going to the toilet and it's just a bit long in it, like getting back to sleep after you've been awake. So obviously all of that will have a detrimental effect on my recovery, but I'm loving the new whoop sort of a display page. You can see like all of last night's readings in one section here. They've added the new blood oxy oxygen feature and also the skin temperature. Yeah, it's really, really good. On to today, and because I'm so poorly recovered, my whole focus today is just gonna be on recovering well, I'm getting the body back into the green on whoop and um, make sure I feel fresh and ready to go for training tomorrow. But firstly, before I do get down to David Lloyd's, we're gonna have a little bit of breakfast, I'm absolutely starving. Uh, I'll show you my go-to meal the day after a game. Have this every Sunday, to be fair. Voila! Even got my little blueberries and raspberries that I missed out on yesterday. 
If I had these yesterday, probably would have bagged two, but is what it is. <laughs> Jokes aside, there are actually footballers out there who are that superstitious, believe it or not. It's crazy, eh? So yeah, this is my breakfast this morning. Salmon, eggs, avocado, a bit of broccoli, balsamic glaze on top with some blueberries, raspberries, little turmeric shot, and a bottle of water to rehydrate. I would normally, well I would occasionally have some carbs with this as well, especially if we had a game on a Tuesday night, because we don't have a midweek game this week, there's no need um, for me personally to have the extra carbs, I felt like I um, had a lot last night after the game, so I'm good with that one today. Then we start with a little bit of foam rolling just to help loosen off any muscles that are a bit fatigued or got a bit tight in the game especially my back my back always like seizes up after the game so spend a fair bit of time on this before i move on to um, more recovery strategies Usually spend around 20 minutes foam rolling. Mainly the major muscles, so like quads, hammies, calves, my lower back. And then um, when I'm done with that, I feel a little bit loose. I get the theragun out. I spend about five to 10 minutes on this. I like the more like tighter, confined areas that the foam roller can't really hit that well. So inside of my groins, outside of my hip flexors, um, and just sort of all in and around that region really. After our phone ride, I always come into here, just get away from the main gym where it's like really loud and it's always quite busy on a Sunday to be fair. So coming here, a lot of people after games, they like to um, they like to do a lot of static stretching, but I, I'm not really the biggest fan. I like to keep it moving. So I just do a lot of like mobility work as opposed to just holding a stretch for a long period of time. I feel like after you play a game, um, your muscles have been stretched so much, they're so fatigued, that if you do do a lot of st static stretching, you're actually increasing the chance of doing some damage to the muscle later that week because you're kind of overstretching them then. So this is like a little bit of a mobility routine that I, uh, I like to do after games. This is the long part of the recovery sessions. 20 minutes on the bike, right? You gotta do a little bit of active recovery after the game. Just helps speed up the, uh, the muscle rebuilding process. The reason I do bike is because you don't wanna load your joints. Um, so avoid like jogging if you can, running, etc. Go for 20 minutes, you get a little dab on, but it's good because you'll flush out any of the toxins that are built up in the game yesterday. And come tomorrow morning, you should be feeling pretty fresh. 20 minutes done. Heart rate got up a little bit there as well. So, help flush out any lactic acid that was built up in the muscles yesterday. Shouldn't be feeling as stiff now tomorrow. And uh, that is actually everything up here in the gym done now.
when it comes to ice baths, you want to try and have it at 10 degrees. It's quite hard to get your baths at home down to 10 degrees unless you buy seven or eight bags of ice from Tesco or wherever. Um, that plunge pool in there is actually a little bit too warm as well. That's about 15, 16 degrees. So I did a little bit longer in there than usual. You'll know if you've done an ice bath right because when you get out, your legs should be really red. Give your body half an hour after the ice bath to get back to its normal temperature. And then after you've had a little break, you can have a jump in the sauna or the steam room. I've actually chosen the sauna today. Didn't have much choice to be fair because I've shown you guys how I recover. I can't take my camera in the steam room, can I? So I'm just doing 20 minutes in here now. It's quite a, it is quite a warm one as well, to be fair. Will be a little bit of a grind. And then after this, guys, I'll jump in the swimming pool and just do some active recovery. Keep things moving. I'm only for 20 minutes, a little bit of hydrostatic pressure, access compression, and that'll be me done for the day. Get home, chill, and that's me.